Welcome to the IBA's weekly roundup of news and information for the radio and television trade. In today's bulletin, Paul Copel talks to Pat Hawker about the spread of digital techniques into consumer electronics. In transmitter news, Channel 4 reaches the last of the 51 main stations and details of five new relays. In Cumbria, Crossthwaite. In Wales, Thlangunnog. In Dorset, Piddle Trentide. In Devon, Coombe. And in Northern Ireland, Lisbillaw. But first, the increasing impact of digital circuitry on the consumer market. What are the benefits? Pat Hawker. Well, the main advantages in, in many ways is in repeatability and simplicity. That although there's an awful lot of complexity in large sort of memory type devices, they, they are basically very similar, simple circuits, but using many hundreds of the, of the same sort of circuit. Looking at some of the practical applications, are there likely to be TV sets that take in digital electronics, for example? Well, there, there, certainly are, there are already one or two designs in which a lot of the signal processing is done uh, digitally. And this has the, the advantage that you can use integrated circuits for more of the sections of the receiver. And it, it's from a manufacturer's point of view, you can have um, automatic insertion of components much more readily and uh, use less board space and so on. Um, on the other hand, at the moment, it's probably true to say that it, it doesn't give you a cost advantage. The digital systems are tending to cost as much as analog, but are less prone to difficulties and distortions and so on. Would it allow you, in fact, to do a lot more with your television set that you can do now? The thing that really would allow you to do a lot more is memory, electronic memory, where you're storing a whole field of information, or even several fields, and then you can hold them for time and process. For instance, one of the things that you can do is at the moment we use an interlace system, um, a 50 hertz interlace system, which means 25 complete pictures uh, a second. Now there is a certain amount of flicker with that and, and the brighter a display comes the more the flicker is noticeable. Digital processing with a memory in a receiver you can change this into a hundred fields a second readout with absolutely dead steady, no flicker at all. But as I say, the main advantages will come only when the cost of memory in a receiver drops dramatically. What about audio? Is there any likely to be use for this in music centres and things like that? Oh, well, the, the, the digital recording, the disc, the, the compact disc, as it's called, uh, I mean, it's already with us and is making an impact. Um, in fact, the compact disc, which uses some of the same techniques as, as the video disc, has proved um, uh, much more successful than video discs. Certain types of the video disc are in process almost of disappearing off the market and a lot of the video disc work is, is tending towards, towards sort of uh, professional storage type systems. The entertainment uses of video discs seems to be a bit in the decline at the moment. And finally, Pat, on a sort of another aspect, presumably the IBA has gone digital at its transmitters, has it? Not the transmitters, because at the moment um, it would be very difficult to, uh, to arrange for the RF side, the, the, the transmission side of it, to be fully digital. But um, what is coming into action over the next few years is the use of digital transmission systems along the city link, uh, the intercity links. Uh, these are still at this moment analog, but we are already experimenting with digital links, and uh, there is intention of introducing them completely. But there again, there is still at this present moment a cost problem. Pat Hawker talking with Paul Copel. Transmitter news now, and in Scotland, Durris continues on reduced power while measurements are made on the new aerial system. There may be occasional interruptions to transmissions, but we hope to be back on full power soon. In Stoke-on-Trent, the Fenton relay is off the air this morning between 9.30 and 11.30 because of work by the electricity board. The same applies in Devon to the relay at Chagford, off today between 9 and 4. On the Isle of Wight, Brightstone is expected to be off this morning between 11 and 12 for aerial work. And Hannington is due to be off this morning between 9.45 and 10.15. The same applies tomorrow to Midhurst, off between 9.45 and 10.15 for a mast light to be changed. In Scotland, the Rosneath relay will be off tomorrow morning between 10.30 and 11.30 for electrical work. And in Northern Ireland, Buckner will be off tomorrow from about 5 to 12 until 2 because of work by the electricity board. 
For the same reason, in Wales, Flanengan will be off tomorrow between 9.30 and 4. In the borders on Thursday morning, Cambret Hill and its dependent relays will be off between 10.30 and 11.30. And on Friday, there will be a short interruption to transmissions from Billsdale at about a quarter past 12, lasting about 10 minutes. New relays now starting in Powys, where Thlen Gunnog is now in service. Designed for about 300 people, it's to serve Thlen Gunnog itself and eastwards for about two miles along the River Tarnot, including Pintra. HTV Wales and TVAM are on channel 65 with S4C on 59. The aerial group is CD, vertically polarised. Thlen Gunnog is in full service. Also in service near Dorchester, the relay at Pedal Trenthide. The station is designed to provide UHF signals for about 900 people living along the valley from about Alton Pancras in the north to Piddle Hinton in the south, including Piddle Trentide itself and White Lackington. TVS and TVAM are on channel 49 and channel 4 on 42, so it's group B aerials with vertical polarisation. That's Piddle Trentide in full service. And in service in Cumbria near Kendall, the relay for Crossthwaite. About 400 people should benefit in Crossthwaite itself and the rural area along the Gilpin River north to Bullman Strands and also a southern area towards Cartmill Fell. Border Television and TVAM are on Channel 60 with Channel 4 on 53. Group CD aerials are needed vertically polarised. Over to Northern Ireland next near Enniskillen where the relay to Liz Belor is now on the air. The station covers about 300 people in Liz Belor itself. Programmes from Ulster Television and TVAM are on Channel 59, with Channel 4 on 65. Group C D aerials should be used, vertically polarised. Lisbelor is now on the air, and official service begins on Friday. In Devon, in the western part of Tynmouth, a relay at Coombe is due to begin transmissions later in the week. The transmitter is designed to cover those western parts of Tynmouth not served either by Beacon Hill or by the Tynmouth relay. About 1,200 people will benefit in the area along Coombe Vale Road and to the south of the river in Ringmore. Programmes from TSW and TVAM will be on Channel 24, with Channel 4 on 31. Aerial should be Group A type, vertically polarised. Coombe is hoped to be on the air later in the week. Channel 4 next, and on the Shetland Isles, the main station at Bresse is now on the air. The most northerly main station, Bresse, is the 51st and final main transmitter to be equipped with the 4th channel. Covering about 10,000 people, Bresse serves more than half of the population of the Shetlands. Channel 4 is on 32, and the official service date is November the 23rd. Bresse's seven relay stations will be equipped with Channel 4 in 1986 or 87. With all the main stations completed, conversion work at just over 300 remaining relays will continue over the next three years or so. In Cumbria, Millam Park on Channel 32 is now on the air, covering a population of 8,000. Due later this week, relays at Bleach Green, Channel 53, and Workington, Channel 54. These two relays add another 3,500 people to Channel 4's coverage. A reminder of our address for technical or reception queries. Engineering Information Service, Independent Broadcasting Authority, Crawley Court, Winchester, Hampshire, SO 21 2QA. The telephone number is Winchester, that's 0962 822444. In the London area, you can ring 584 7011, but ask to be put through to Engineering Information. Join us again next Tuesday at either 9.15 or 12.15. Until then, from Janet Smythe and myself, John Lovell, goodbye from Crawley Court.